Testament. Let's get a hymn book. Turn to number uh, 408. Number 408. Let's all stand this morning. Everybody get your hymn book. Number 408. We're going to sing Joy to the World this morning. So everybody sing real big, real loud. Amen. Amen. Grab your hymn book. Amen. Page 408. Amen. Hopefully I can sing it. Amen. I, I ain't the best singer, but amen. We'll make joyful noise to the Lord. Amen. Sing it out on the first. Joy to be seated. Good morning. It sure is good to see everybody out in church today. Uh, we're going to sing another one here in just a minute, so keep your hymn books handy there this morning. We're really glad to have everyone out. Now, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, it's coming down to the wire for our big day for next Sunday, and that will be our, our giveaway for the Bus Kids Christmas present. Uh, I want to say thank you for all of you that have, have, uh, have given and are still, even today. Uh, today's our day to get all the money in, and uh, they going shopping. Bus workers are going shopping this week. And we're going to have uh, something here next Sunday morning that you won't see anywhere else, I promise you. Anything like it. Next Sunday morning, our Christmas giveaway for the bus kids. So don't forget that. Now, uh, several things right quick. We're going to sing another song. Don't forget, play practice today at 4.30. Everybody, everybody in the play and any part at all. 4.30 this evening. It's coming down to the end. The program's next Sunday night. And uh, so that'll be 4.30 today. 6 o'clock this coming Saturday. Don't forget that too. And uh, so a couple things right quick. Uh, for any family that did not get a choir CD, we're giving away one to each family. So if you did not see uh, Andy back there in the sound booth as you leave this morning, we're going to have uh, several of them. And be ready for we're giving one away to each most people don't even use CD player anymore, but several people have asked about them. So you have a free CD of our choir singing. Y'all would not believe the response that I've got from that, that choir CD. You just wouldn't believe it. I'm talking about uh, Iowa, uh, Missouri, New York, um, Maryland, Tennessee, Georgia, Florida, um, all over the place, all over the place. People just, Texas, uh, you wouldn't believe. One preacher said he sent it to 28 different preachers. Um, and the, out in Te we don't even know. And the Lord was in that thing. He was on it. And so um, that's why when rock singers do it, they do the opposite. They don't get on to use it. And the Lord gets on right when he uses it. So uh, appreciate everybody helping out in that. You have a free choir CD per family uh, this morning. When you, when you go out, don't forget that, okay? All right, come on, Spent. Let's try another one right quick. Uh, let's all remember those that are sick, not able to be here this morning. Dylan, or Sandman man, is, uh, in the hospital, had a ruptured appendix, and uh, appendix, had appendicitis, had to do uh, surgery pretty bad. So uh, let's all stand, pray for him this morning, others that are sick and different things, and all kind of problems today, but pray for those. Brandon's preaching off down the country somewhere. Pray for him today and others that are out doing the work of God. So let's all stand and sing again. Amen. Miss Desi said we're singing another Christmas morning. Amen. So turn your turn your song book to 388. Amen. I picked one, but she said it had to be Christmas. Amen. So page 388. Amen. We're going to try it. Amen. I'm going to sing it for grateful. Amen. All the first. Sing it out. Of all ye. Oh, golly. Let's 
Let's see if I can sing a song. Amen. Yeah. Oh, ye faith. be seated. Amen. First reading and singing is pick one you know. Uh, 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 <laughs> good job. Thank you, brother. All right. Let's, uh, uh, we're going to have a little time of fellowship in just a minute. We'll make everybody feel welcome. I know it's really nasty weather out there, and I appreciate you braving the, the cold and the rain and the fog, and but boy, do we need this rain. It, we need a week of it like this, but let's uh, enjoy it. Be careful. Uh, go, excuse me, coming in, uh, going out, driving in this, especially with the kids running around out there. Don't forget that uh, to uh, be careful going in and out. Please do that, okay? All right, now, announcements. Today, choir practice, uh, I'm sorry, play practice, 4.30, 4.30 this evening. Uh, church at 6, come praying, bring somebody with you, and then we're going to have bus meeting after church tonight. Very, very important. Now. Um, that, that, that they're going shopping this week, and uh, we'll have all the gifts in here next week. We've already got, I think, I think, as of right now, 15 brand new bicycles, 15 of them. And uh, that, that's a fortune right there about the day price, but we got a deal, and people, uh, some people just went and bought one and brought it, and that's tremendous, tremendous. A lot of kids are going to be really happy when they leave here next Sunday, and we're also getting gifts for all, everybody that rides a bus. Anybody that rides a bus, even if it's their first time, they're going to get a nice gift from our church. So don't forget that. That's next Sunday morning. Today's the day we bring the money in, and then tonight we're going to distribute it. They're going shopping this week. Okay? All right. And then um, don't forget also, uh, Wednesday night, come praying, bring somebody with you. We had a really, really wonderful church supper this past Wednesday night. Unbelievable. We filled that place up. We had a great time. A good time of fellowship. And it's just like I told you, you get to know people that you don't normally get to talk to at church, and it worked out really great. So uh, I hope everybody had a good time, and I appreciate that too. So uh, don't forget all these things. Winter camp will be here before we know it. That's Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the 27th, 28th, and 29th. Now we'll have morning services Thursday and Friday with food after church, and the uh, – the, we have young youth meetings all uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, Thursday night, Friday morning, Friday night. And so it's really going to be something special. Everybody planned last year. It it turned into a revival. I ain't kidding. It's packed out in here on Friday night. And so uh, everybody plan on being with us at winter camp 
uh, the 27th, the 28th, and the 29th, okay? Just don't forget that. Okay, now we're going to be friendly, and the choir's going to come sing, so let's all stand, turn around there, and be friendly to somebody this morning. Everybody stand, turn around, and make yourself home, be friendly to everybody. Help me out with the mic, sorry, y'all. One, two, one, two, this one, two, and this one, one, two, one, two, and this one. Come on, let's go. Amen. Come on, choir.
Just ring Santa Robin. Somebody left the phone laying up here. I'll put it right here for you. It says there is motion at the front door. <laughs> that's good. Somebody trying to rob you while you're here at church. That's awful, ain't it? That happens. Amen. All right. Amen. Now we've got uh, I hear people sent from hither and thither and yon, and I praise God for it, dear brother. Over in Tennessee, uh, it always helps out with the, uh, the bus kids Christmas and other ones from different places. My goodness, I don't know where I'm from, but I thank the Lord for all these. Appreciate that. And um, folks right here in our own church that mailed it this week because they couldn't be here today for one thing or another. So I thank God for that. And uh, you will not see, you will not see a greater effort uh, for kids and what you're going to see here next Sunday morning. And uh, uh, that, if, if, if another, a civic group did that, it'd be all over the newspaper. I don't want it in the newspaper. Don't even tell them. But I'm just saying, they'd make a big deal out of it. But uh, thank God we're part of a church that believes in practicing what we preach. And I appreciate all y'all that do this sacrificially for kids that otherwise wouldn't get much at all. So I'm happy, I'm happy about that. Amen. So let's all give this morning. Honor the Lord. He'll bless you for it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for all you've done for us. And Lord, we could never even thank you enough for stuff we don't even know uh, that you do for us every day, protecting us and 
keeping things from happening to us and giving us a mind to think and eyes to see and ears to hear. Or we know this is not an accident. It couldn't be just popped out of nowhere by itself. Lord, I'm thankful that you you said you, you formed the eyes. You made the ears. You made our body. And we're created. And we thank you for that. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you already for the good Sunday school lesson today. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing and all these things that prepares our heart for the preaching of the Word of God. Now, bless this offering this morning. We thank you for everybody who gives faithfully. Thank you for these that give occasionally special offerings from way off different places. We pray that you bless them. Have you in our hearts this morning. Get glory and honor to yourself. Whatever you do, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. While they're getting the song ready for us right quick, don't forget now, play practice, 4.30 this evening. Church, 6. Oh, nasty, ugly day like this. Uh, you don't want to lay around the house. That's what talk about getting depressed. That, that's what will get you depressed. Lay around a day like this. Get to church. Get around people. Enjoy life. The Lord will bless you for it. Now, uh, don't forget, we have choir pra uh, play practice at 6, uh, six o'clock. This Saturday, and then next Sunday night will actually be the Christmas play. So we're excited about it. All right, ladies, go ahead. Oh. 
his gospel is peace. Chain shall he break, for the slave is our brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful covers grace we let all within us praise his holy name. that say amen thank god for that wonderful night all right amen let's everybody get settled down now get your bible open and we're going to act, uh, matthew chapter number two this morning this is uh uh one of the two in at length accounts of the uh, what we have call christmas story the birth of jesus and i'm gonna look at it from maybe a different angle than you've ever heard before and emphasize one of the main players in this story. We're going to call it that. Matthew chapter 2. Look at your Bible, please. Now everyone settle down now uh, as we look at the Word of God just for a minute this morning. And I hope you'll uh, stay with me just for a few minutes. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east, that's that would be over. The, you know what they're talking about on TV? Up the West Bank, on the other side of that West Bank, that'd be east of Bethlehem. That land over there, the other side of of uh, the Palestine. No, there's no Palestinian land actually. That's Israel's land, but it's on the West Bank that they let them have there for a while. It's on the other side of that. So these guys came from way over yonder in the east. These wise men did. Say it, verse two. Where is he? That is born king of the Jews. For we have seen his star in the east. His star. Not a star. His star. I want you to remember that. And are come to worship him. How'd they know he's even there? That star. They saw the star and it led them. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. I reckon he was. He's getting worried there. Afraid somebody's going to unseat him. Uh, he's a politician. Afraid he's going to lose his job. And all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes and the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. He said, he said listen, I don't ever read the Bible. I'm just a politician. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. Thus it is written by the prophet. Then he sent him back to Micah, 700 years before it happened. Micah the prophet wrote verse 6. That's one way you know the Bible's true. The one way you know the Bible's true is its ability to predict the future and never miss it one time. So he says, in Bethlehem. And it said, out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Now that ain't happened yet. He didn't rule Israel the first time he come. That's the second coming. Verse 7. Then Herod... When he had privily, private, called the wise men, inquire, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. So the Lord, he wasn't just a little tiny baby at this time. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. So and when they had heard the king, 
They departed, and lo, the star, there it is again, there's that star again, which they saw in the east, went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Science immediately says, impossible. That's why the Bible said, beware of the position of science falsely so-called. Watch it. With exceeding great joy. That's the title of my message this morning. And when they saw the star. I want to talk about that star this morning. Jeff, help me back there a minute, back in the back, if you don't mind. Um, I'm going to illustrate this morning what this was. The Bible says that this story revolved around a moving star. Them wise men had studied the scriptures and they knew that the Messiah was coming. I mean, there was no TV, wasn't no, there wasn't no phone, no, no kind of mass communication like we have now. So all they had was the, the Old Testament scriptures to study. And so they, they studied these things and they knew it was coming. And then they saw a star appear and the star led them to Bethlehem right over the place where Jesus was born. And um, I want to think about that star for a minute. Science would say that's impossible. And that's because science don't have the Bible definition of a star. The Bible definition of a star, which is the correct definition, is a light in the sky. And it doesn't always have to be 100 times bigger than the sun in the Bible, which is the correct definition. Many times science gets confused when they start giving definition to words that are not historical or biblical, like bowels, for example. Your bowels in the Bible, is what does that look like? Bowl, bowel, it's all the insides of you, not just one part of you, like they've changed it. Like the word gay, it sure don't mean homosexual in the Bible. All, all these words, uh, science give them a new word meaning and say, see there, the Bible's wrong. because it's, uh, No, no, they're wrong for giving that definition to that science. So a star in the Bible is a light in the sky. Now, the strange thing about this star was it moved and it led them to Jesus. Now, all right, give me the lights there, Jeff. Just get all of them right quick. And I'm going to illustrate this so, so you can kind of get it in your mind. This is special for the kids in here this morning. To get that in their mind, use both hands there. Just punch them thing. There you go. All of them on the left. Now, uh, uh, just punch all of them on the left. There you go. Punch them. This right here, I'm going to let this be the star. Now, I hope you can see that, and this star is up here in the sky, like this. I see you back there. Get off that phone. <laughs> Look up here at me. Quit getting your nose. I'm just kidding. All right, this star is up here like this, and you see this star, and it's twinkle, twinkle, and the clouds come by, and they study it, and they said, there's this star. Then the thing moves like this. And they say, it's going to lead us to the Messiah. Let's follow it. It's going to lead us to the Messiah. And it came and it stopped right over the neighborhood honky-tonk where there's cooking meth. No. No. It didn't stop over top of Hooters. It stopped over top of the Bethlehem where Jesus was. It was his star. His star led them to the place where Jesus was born. That was the purpose of this star. All right, y'all, have a seat. We got you on camera. All right, look here. This star met, led them to where the Lord was. So here's a star over here. If it stopped, they stopped. If it moved, they moved. They said, we've seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Okay, Jeff, go ahead. Now, what I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to show you that that little star is me and you. Me and you. I could show you in the Bible where that people who win souls are pictured as a star. Jesus was the side picture of the sun. The church as a whole is pictured by the moon, which has no light of its own. It reflects light off the, moon, off the sun. A moon's a picture of the church. The church has no light of its own. It reflects light off of the sun, S-O-N, to a dark world. And in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 3, the Bible says, they that turn many to righteousness will be like the stars of heaven. 
So a star in the Bible is a picture of a soul winner. And, and it's pictures of someone who points somebody to Jesus Christ. Not only does the baby in, in the manger create a stir on earth, this baby created a stir in heaven. I'm talking about the conjunction of the planets and the, the, the solar system and the zodiac and the Pleiades and Orion, all them things. It has shown that light in the heart. Now, picture, star is a picture of a soul winner. Stars in the Bible are pictures of somebody who points somebody else to Jesus. The world is Hollywood. Hollywood has what they call stars. Somebody said, there are Hollywood movies, you know where they come from? That would be the world's counterfeit for a soul winner. And a star, they live in uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Los, that's the city of angels. Angeles, that's what Los Angeles means. City of angels, except they're fallen ones. And and they're there, and they have a star. And so when a person gets real big and they put them all over the screen, they say, there's a movie star. There's a football star. There's a... In the Bible, a star is somebody who turns somebody to righteousness. And that's what we would like to be this morning. So three things about it right quick. Number one, God can use a star. God can use a star. Now, there's millions of them. And they don't have to be anything special. A star is not something special, actually. It's something God, God's got plans for all those stars in the future, and, and his government increase has no end. So all those stars out in outer space, God has a plan for them in the future. Just hold your horses. Uh, he'll get around to it. Don't you worry. He always does. And so the Lord made all these stars, and they're not special. As a matter of fact, in Genesis, where it said he made this, and he made that, and he made that, P.S., he made the stars also, just like flung, flung them out there into space. That's how they got here. And the star nothing special. But God don't have to have something special. He used a donkey. He used a rooster. He used a fish. He used a piece of bread. He used a rock. He used a bird, a rooster. He, he, my pastor used to say, any old bush will do. And so the same thing is true with us. God does not have to have somebody special to use for his glory. He does not. He does not. You don't have to be super talented or smart or rich or beautiful or, or good looking or have a lot going for you. Well, no, you don't have to have that. You just have to make yourself available. And any person in here today can say, Lord, I want to be your star. Make yourself available. He's great enough to make the stars, but he's small enough to live in my heart. I'm thankful for that. Number two, God can and will use his star. They said, I saw his star. I want to be his star. Amen. I want to be a, a star for the Lord. Not, not like in fame and fortune like the world said, but a star that just comes over and points people and says, there he is. There he is. That's what our job is as a Christian. Our job is not to shine brightly and outshine the Lord. Our job is just to point men to where he is. That's what I'm doing up here this morning. I'm pointing you to him. I fade out, he fades in, and he's bigger than me. Uh, now, that's there in the world. They have what they call star search, you know, and they'll have a star search, and they'll say who can sing or who can play an instrument or dance around uh, or act wicked, and we'll give you a, we'll give you a lot of money uh, for it, like the new Taylor Swift, and, uh, and we'll, play, uh, we'll give you a lot of money if you'll act wicked and mess up a lot of people, and the devil pays them off, and they become a star. They're star search. Those Hollywood movie stars, you got to hand it to them. They're wicked, but you got to hand it to them. They're dedicated. And they work, and they exercise, and they train, and they give their self to that. Lord, they'll, if, if they get a part in a movie, and they say, well, you got to be, they'll lose 40, 40 pounds. And, and the, but you say, well, if they paid me $10 million, I'd lose 40 pounds too. Well, the Lord give you a lot more than that to be his star, to be dedicated to him. They're willing to pay a price in order for the world to use them. That's right. They'll do anything to be a star. Starve their self. Learn a new language. Stay up and study a script for months and months and months and months. And I say to you this morning, you want God to use you? You want to be his star? Dedicate yourself to him. Sacrifice a little bit. Study the scripture. Uh, make yourself available. My pastor always said, any old bush will do. And God is not a talent scout 
as we see the world in. God don't look down and say, well, they can play an instrument or they can sing. Or they... That's okay if you can do that. That's, that's great. But the Lord don't have to have that. You know what He wants? He wants your availability. He don't want your ability. He wants your availability. He wants you to just say, I'm available. I'm available. We all know stories of people who had no special gifts or talents as far as the world goes, but were used greatly by God. I remember old Uncle Bud Robinson couldn't even, uh, some of them old preachers couldn't even talk plain. Didn't have any education. None at all. Hardly. Some of them learned how to read, reading the Bible. Some of those old mountain preachers way up yonder who never even got to go to school and couldn't pronounce the words right, but God used them. And it's because they made themselves available to the Lord. He'll, 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 he'll use you to be a star. When, uh, years ago, been several years ago now, I was down uh, walking through the, the mall in Hickory. I was going to get something. I go to the mall about probably one time every two years, maybe. Make a quick trip through that. They're having a special sale on belts or something, or I'm going to hunt something. Other than that, I don't, I don't have no, no use for a mall. Uh, but uh, I was down there one day. It was Christmas time, and I was walking through there. And uh, I went through there, and there was a lady working at uh, one of them stores, like at Dillard's, one of them stores, or I forget which one it was, and she was handing out little little things for Christmas. And I walked by like it, and she said, Ain't you Danny Castle? And I said, uh, Yes, ma'am, I sure am. She said, Can I talk to you for a minute? She said, Will you talk to me? And I said, Yeah, I'll be glad to. And she said, you came and preached a revival at my church somewhere on the other side of Hickory several years ago. And she said, it made an impression on me. She said, I need help. And I said, what's wrong? She said, my husband has left me. She said, he took off with some woman. She said, I'm, it's just about to kill me. She said, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I said, ma'am, I'm so sorry. I'm so, she said, I've got a break in about 10 minutes from this. And can I meet you down at the food court? And I said, yes, ma'am, I'll be glad to. And uh, 10 minutes went by. I went down there, sat down, and it was, I think it was one in front of those Chick-fil-A, one of them before they got seats all out there. I sat down here. She sat down there, and she just spilled her gut. And she said, you don't know. She said, I don't know what I'm going to do. She said, my heart is hurting. She said, I love him. And now he's with somebody else, and that's killing me. And I don't know. I seem like I've lost my faith. And she said, what? And I'm telling you, it started pouring out. I mean, I just started putting out. Uh, the Bible said that. The Bible said that. The Bible said that. The Bible said that. Trust the Lord with all thine heart. Turn on. Uh, you know, the, the Lord take care of you. He sees the end from the beginning. I mean, I just started, And she was just soaking it up. And when I got through, she said, the Lord must have sent you. She said, you must have been sent here by God. You must have been. I said, I don't know about that. But I said, and I, have, and I thought, that's my job to be a star. And I pointed her to the one that could help her. I can't help her. But I can point her to someone. Listen, you may be here this morning on drugs. You may be here this morning running for the cops. You may be here this morning and open oh, it a minute. I made it quit snowing. I make it. I don't want it to quit snowing. While I'm, uh, I, I hit it too hard. Uh, but anyway, you you may be here this morning in all kinds of trouble. But I can point you to somebody that can help you today. I want to be his star that points men. To the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know. Ed Blue tell about. He said he's going down the road one day. And uh, oh Ed. He was an old country preacher. Old long legged. I had him preach for me up there. Marion Four. And he's, he's an Indian. Ed Blue. Great. Great old fashioned preacher. And uh, he, he said he's coming up the road one day. And he said when he's coming up the road. He said. Uh, he saw an elderly lady. Sitting on the side of the road. With, with, a, with a flat tire. And she was just standing out there. Cars just a whiz and by both ways. He said, the Lord said, stop. And he was like that star. He went over and he, and he said, uh, she was elderly. She didn't know nothing about it. She didn't know how to change a flat tire. Nothing about it. And she was like that. And he come walking across that highway. And he said, ma'am, can I help you? She said, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you. He said, ma'am, can I help you? So he got in there, got in her car opened up the trunk. He said he took that old spare tire out. He said that spare looked like, he said it's thin thread. You can about see the air through it. And he said he got that thing jacked up, jacked up. Cars just a whizzing on both sides. He said the whole time, that old lady's over going, thank you, Lord. Thank you for sending this good man. Thank you for sending this good man to help me. Thank you. And he was getting a blessing 
just listen to her say that. And, and, and he, he jacked that car up, got that wheel off. He said, uh, out there and putting that other wheel on, getting his hands dirty and grease all over the place. And she said, oh, Lord, thank you for sending this good man. He's down there going, woo! He's, I mean, he's about to get a blessing. Uh, just think about it. So uh, he, he, uh, he got the tire on, got it fixed up. She said, Lord, what do I owe you, son? He said, ma'am, you don't owe me nothing. He said, you, you just say that one more time, will you? And she said, thank you for this good man. He said, that's all I want right there. He said, I've got blessed by blessing you. You know what he was? That star. He's just that star. And that's all me and you are. We're nothing special, but I'm glad we get to be his star. I'm glad I get to, uh, listen, I'd rather be his star today than to be uh, in Hollywood star any day of the week. Because that's going to crash and burn one day, y'all. And the Bible said these stars in Daniel 12 shall shine as the brightness of permanent forever. Forever. Our career don't end when we die. Our, our, our job don't work when somebody comes out with a better movie. They ain't going to come out with one no better than this. There'll never be a greater story told than this. There'll never be a message of hope better than what we have here. I'm glad that God will use His star. I use that flashlight, see, to, I'm over that, like that star came over right where the Lord was. And that's why me and you have light, to point people to where the Lord ran. I was preaching, when we preached out roses one time years ago, he was preaching out there a lot and everything. And people think you're crazy. People think street preachers are crazy, but the, the reason they do that is their lack of, of education. And uh, they're uneducated. People think that. They don't read the Bible because every preacher in the Bible was a street preacher. Everyone, including Jesus. Matter of fact, there are no church buildings in the Bible. None. They all they preached outside in the marketplaces, in the, in, in, in the fields. And some of the great preachers of days gone by had their big meetings, like George Whitfield and all them, out in pastors and, and just out in the open air. We preached up there at Rose and Mary a long time ago. And uh, this woman walked by. And uh, somebody come up to me out there and said, she said to give this to you. I was about 21, 22 years old. And I, I read that note and it said, dear sir, do you have a mental problem? <laughs> and she said, she said uh, uh, is there not a church that will allow you to preach? I, mean, I was preaching about all over the country right at that time. And uh, she said, uh, there is a time and a place for this kind of thing. And I'm, I want to write one back and say, ma'am, do you have a mental problem? Have you ever read the Bible? Are you that dumb or are you just letting it show or, or what? Uh, no, no. I, but I didn't. I was nice about it. I, I never did even see her after that. But I thought, you know what? I think the only place you're ever supposed to talk about God is with a steeple and a cross on it. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. They, they come from the far east, brother, and saw that star and come towards me. Listen, this message that we preach this morning is good for the whole world. Every tribe, every nation, every color, every creed, every religion in China, in, in, in Jerusalem, in Africa, South America, North America, Australia, up is to point men to the Lord Jesus Christ. God uses his star to point people to Christ. Sure does. The star didn't point to the church. That's, they said, I don't follow that star. It didn't come over a big synagogue and stop there. Amen. That star, it didn't come over there and stop in front of the rabbis meeting over there at a mosque somewhere. It came over the place where the Lord Jesus was and said, there he is right there. There's the one you're looking for right there. It ain't the church. It ain't the priest. You say, well, I've been going to church and it ain't helping me a bit. If you get a glimpse of him, it'll help you. You need the Lord this morning, young lady. You need the Lord this morning, young man. You need to pour out your heart to the Lord and give him all your problems and all your burdens and all your heartaches and just say, Lord, I'm glad they, they come. Danny's a star. He pointed me to you. I'm coming to you and I'm getting right with the Lord this morning. I mean, how many times have you ever heard anybody say, you know, when I was lost, I was out there, man, I was messed up on drugs, and I was, I was going crazy, my life was uh, a train wreck, and I was all messed up and everything, but I kept watching so-and-so, and this lady that I worked with, and she'd come in there every day, and she had the best attitude, and she read her Bible, and she talked to everybody, and everything. you know what she was? A star. That woman was a star 
who led that other person to Jesus Christ. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with, with, with exceeding great joy. Well, they said, well, I were, listen, I remember the night I got saved. The night I got saved, there was an old star there. His name was Uncle Joe Parson. Joe was a, a, a legend around this part of the country, all over the mountains of North and South Carolina, Kentucky, West Virginia, Tennessee, North Georgia, South Carolina. Old Joe preached all over this country. Joe pastored down there in Charlotte for a while, and my pastor called Joe to preach revival. I, 18 years old, I'd done, been around enough to figure out there was something more to life than what I had. And that night I came in, I saw a star. And that star came over and stood where the young child was. And that night I got saved. And you know something? Here's the, here's the thing about this star business. After that star pointed them to Jesus, you don't know, he just fades out. His job's done. There's, there's nothing else mentioned about, boy, they kept following that star. Five years old, they're still looking at that star. No. No, the star done its job. It points you to Jesus. As soon as you see Jesus, the star's job, it's over. Then you look at him. That's what John the Baptist was. He said, he must increase, I must decrease. So when, when, you, you don't, you don't, when a man leads you to the Lord, he's the star that points you to Jesus. And after that, Jesus is everything. Right? Everything in the world to you this morning ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ. He is. He's my everything, and it's all the art to it. He must increase, I must decrease. His eyes went off the star, their eyes went off the star, and on him. He fades, a star fades out, he fades in. You never hear of it again. Like them four men that brought that man to Jesus, the Bible said they brought him up there and they stood upon the roof, and they uncovered the roof. It talks a lot about them four men. And they lowered that guy down and Jesus healed him. You don't ever hear nothing about them guys no more. Their job's done. You don't, you don't, Get no further than that. Bus workers. Bus workers are stars in the work of God. They're pointing men to the Lord. And as soon as they see the Lord, their, the bus worker's job fades out and the Lord fades in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't want my kids. I don't want my kids here. Or six of them. Uh, 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 all six of them this morning. I don't want my girls. I don't want uh, Molly and Ethan and Frankie. I don't want them to grow up saying, I believe in Daddy's God because Daddy believed it. I don't want, I don't want my kids to say, I don't want them just to believe in their Daddy. I want them to believe in their Daddy's God. So when I'm gone, their faith don't die. When, they're, when, when I'm gone, they'll say, well, Daddy's gone, but he was just a star pointing us to Jesus. Jesus ain't going nowhere, and my faith is in him. I'm telling you, hallelujah, la ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I don't have a lot of faith. I'm not. A, people say, boy, you got a lot of faith. I don't really. I, I doubt and I worry just like you do. I've jumped out several times. I'm telling you, I have. I've jumped, I've jumped off the diving board when there wasn't no water in the pool several times, and there was water in it by the time I got there. I don't recommend it, but I have. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about litter. You, you surely understand what I'm talking about. When I, I've let, stepped out on faith uh, many a time, many a time, when I didn't know if I was going to make it or not, somehow or another, God's always had mercy. I'm not a great man of faith. But I'll tell you one thing here this morning. God done something for me when I was 18 years old that I cannot explain. I have never got over. There's something different happened on the inside of me. And I'm doing my best to point my family and my kids to that God that did it for me so that when I'm gone, they can still look at Him. That's what star job is. They brought Him to Jesus. That's what Paul told Timothy. He said, I'm persuaded that that faith that's in you was in your mother and then your grandmother. On back, they were star that pointed Timothy to God. Amen. My question to you this morning is, will you be God's star? Will you be God's star? Or, if you're not saved, will you let me point you to Him? Now, everybody in here is going to die. That's a fact. You know what the death rate is? 100%. Yeah. 
It ain't if, it's when. You say, what? They ain't going to invent nothing to stop people from dying. They claim they have, but they ain't going to do it. Fountain of life, eternal life in this can't happen because of sin. When you sin, sin brings forth death, and that's why we have to die. This body, you know why it gets old and why it gets wrinkled and finally dies? Because of sin. And you ain't going to get out of it. The best thing you can do with your life is say, you know what? That story's true. I'm going to come to him. I saw the star this morning, preacher. Point me to him. If your life's messed up today, you can get it fixed. If you've never been saved, you say, well, I got my doubts about all this. Well, it's a good time to fix it. Fix it. You're always going to have doubts. That's the human mind works like that. But when you stack up all the evidence, it's overwhelming that this thing's true. My job this morning is to point you to him when they saw the star. Let's stand with our heads bowed this morning. Every head bowed and every eye closed, please. Um, Miss Desi, if you'll come, please. She's going to play something softly this morning on the piano. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Maybe. Just maybe. Just maybe. No one's talking. No one's moving. Maybe here this morning while the piano plays softly today. God spoke to your heart, sir. So I had a dream the other night, preacher, like scared me to death. Well, you better pay attention. You better pay attention. That's God warning you. God warning you. No, it just cause this crazy talk. I had something on my mind. No, that's God warning you. you better pay attention. If you're here this morning. God's speaking to your heart. And you need to get right. We'll take just a minute here and have an invitation. You'll come, somebody come and pray with you. Some of these ladies come pray with you. If your girl, if your men come pray with you, boy. Something about coming publicly to Jesus Christ that God blesses. Come on, right now. Come on. Let's just get around this altar. Right now. Right now. You say, hey, preacher, I want to be God's star. I want to be God's star. I'd like for the Lord to use my life to point people to Jesus Christ. Come on. Come on, right now. Let's get around here and pray. Amen. When they saw the star. They rejoiced with joy, exceeding great joy. Well, y'all come pray with this young man that picked him up this morning. And uh, I think Kelly, they brought him. Hey, some of you ladies come pray. These girls come here. Need prayer this morning. Need prayer. These ladies need prayer. Amen. 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 Thank you, sister. God still speaking to your heart this morning. Amen. You may be the biggest, toughest guy in town. That don't mean nothing. You still face God one day. Why don't you let the Lord fix what's wrong with you this morning? Something deep, deep down inside tells you there's more than just this life. There's got to be. There's got to be. Life, make, it makes no sense unless there's more. Amen. Let the Lord help you this morning. We're going to pray. Somebody else, somebody else. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. That's good. God's answered prayers, right? Let the Lord help you today. Let the Lord help you this morning. He'll bless you. Amen. Oh, God, help us this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this wonderful story about when these wise men saw that star. And that star came and pointed them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, help us to be your star. Lord, they don't care about being no star in this old world. It don't matter. They'll burn out one day. Lord, I'm glad we can be your star. And I pray that each one of us will learn to do that while we have time. God, help us to point men to Jesus during these dark days and difficult times that we live in. Those watching from home, watching online, watching on the internet, watching on uh, Facebook, Lord, whoever they might be, I pray that this will be the day, this will be the time right now when they'll come to you, when they'll come to you. Repent. Turn to Jesus with all their heart. God, do what ought to be done. Bless these on the altar. Bless these that come this morning. Lord, I pray that a dart of conviction will settle in on that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, teenager, maybe here this morning, 
who need you. I'll do it for Jesus' sake. We'll thank you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name. So are you still praying now this morning? Wait just a few seconds. Are they still praying? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, girls. That's the thing to do. Give it to the Lord. We need the Lord, y'all. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Bless your heart, Katie. Y'all pray for this girl. Amen. Amen, Jack. Hey, Gracie. Amen. 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 That's what his answer. His answer right here. Life messed up. Right here's the answer. I don't care what you do. I don't care how bad it is. I mean, I don't, I don't care what kind of trouble you've been in. Right here's a place to get it fixed. Get it fixed. Amen. I think this is a young man that Kelly brought this morning on, on the bus. Just pick him up out here at the end of the road. Brought him to church. Is that right, Mark? Amen. Hallelujah. Cold, rainy. She went back, picked him up on the road, brought him to church this morning. And that a blessing. She was God's star. He came pointing him to Jesus. Amen. Lord got saved. Huh? What's his name? Amen. Amen. You know, everybody in the Bible that Jesus called, he called them out publicly. Every one of them. What, you remember Billy Graham always said that? Call them People say, well, there's no such thing as a come to the altar in the Bible. I, I understand that. But there's just something about confessing publicly that seals it, seals it in your heart. You don't have to come to the altar to get saved. But boy, it sure is something special about confessing him in front of men. He said, I'm not ashamed. I believe it. I believe it. Amen. That'll get the job done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And y'all pray for this young man. God will just give him that whatever he needs. Amen. I never met him just a few minutes ago. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Might want me to stay and deal with it for a little bit. All right. All hearts clear. Amen. Amen. All right. Everybody listen up. 4.30 uh, play practice. Everybody in the play. Got to get down to business now. Next Sunday night Christmas play. Then don't forget Next Sunday morning will be the most amazing thing some of you have ever seen. That's next Sunday morning at uh, regular time, 10 o'clock Sunday school, preaching at 10.50. You're, you won't get in the Christmas spirit. People say, well, I'm not even in the Christmas spirit. Yeah, next Sunday put you in it, buddy. Ain't no hope for you if that don't. So uh, let's, uh, let's don't forget that. And everybody bring somebody with you next Sunday morning. It's going to be really special. All right. Hearts clear. Amen. But Terry, dismiss some prayer and everybody fellowship before we go. 4.30 this evening. See you back. 6 o'clock.